Item number four, uh, public safety presentation by Chief of Police Rob Landon. Congratulations, Chief, by the way. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor Gill, Vice Mayor Dukes, uh, Council Members. Thank you for the opportunity to present the uh, Yuba City Police Department's semi-annual report to you. And this will kind of be a compilation of the last year also. Just some members of our police department. Some of the things I'm going to talk about this evening are the uh, basic structure of the police department, our calls for service. We'll break them down a little bit, tell you about the top calls that we do receive. The uniform crime reporting for part one crimes, which is a measurement for how many crimes, um, certain crimes that we take on certain elements that the FBI measures and how we compare against other jurisdictions. And I'm going to talk about some of the uh, areas of emphasis for the 2014. And anytime you guys have questions along the way, please feel free to ask. It is, yeah. It's probably me both times. Okay. This is our uh, records, our communications, I'm sorry. This is our communications, our dispatchers, essentially. So the Yuba City Police Department is made up of uh, 64 sworn officers. Currently, we are staffed at 54, and we have two out on long-term disability. And I'll show you how that affects us. But number one, that puts the emphasis back on patrol, because that's our job. Our primary responsibility is to answer 911 calls. We are uh, actively recruiting, as we always do, but we're in competition with all the local agencies and with the state also, anywhere in the state. Everybody's hiring police officers right now. Academies aren't putting out enough officers, so we are, uh, we're, we're seeing the numbers right now and the, uh, the demand for officers. As you saw today with uh, Officer Novak, we have had some retirements this past year. We've had three long-term people with over 25 years, our Assistant Chief Jeff Webster, uh, Officer Novak, and our School Resource Officer Al Ortega, who many people are familiar with probably in here, retired. And it does impact us a little bit on patrol. But we, make, we, we, do, we get by by restructuring where we put our staffing, and we do, again, put the emphasis on the, uh, on the patrol. We have 28 civilians and we cover 14.65 square miles of jurisdiction. We do it in five beats. This is a, uh, probably hard to read, but this is our chain of command. And basically what it's going to tell you is the police department is broken down into three different divisions. We have admi administration, which handles all the paperwork because every arrest has to be followed by all the proper documentation to make sure that we have a successful prosecution. We have our patrol officers um, under patrol. On the far left, field operations, it's our uniform patrol division, essentially, with the uh, traffic enforcement, community service officers, our school resource officers, one at each high school. Then we have our investigations. A lot of our uh, crimes, they require more than an officer can do in a six- or eight-hour period, so we make sure that the investigations are complete by having a detective assigned to it. That also has our gang unit and our narcotic enforcement team, which are regional task forces. Our operations support, again, that's communications and police records. These are our volunteers. Volunteers are our biggest, um, one of our biggest assets at the department because we don't have to pay them. They do so much for us, and they do it for so little in return. They give us so many hours. Some of these people are working full time for us, 40 hours. They do all kinds of stuff. They all bring a specialized um, expertise into into what they what they bring to the police department, and we try to utilize utilize as best we can. This is the beat map. This is Yuba City. Basically, we break it down into five different regions. We kind of do it by our calls for service, volume for call for service. So up on the far left-hand corner and up is north, just to orient you, beat one. A lot of commercial over there with the uh, Sam's Club, Walmart, and that area. Beat two is uh, the split right down the middle is Highway 99, so beat two would be the north, uh, east, northwest corner. Beat three would be the northeast corner. It goes from Highway 99 up to Pease Road and down to... Um, it looks like Calusa. Beat four is the middle of the city, then beat five is the, uh, the rest of Yuba City, and beat six currently is the area annexed by us, but serviced by Sutter County Sheriff's Department. No, I don't know how that got in there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Must have been Judy. <laughs> All right. The types of calls we handle, and these are basically in order. Number one calls, security checks, disturbances, alarms, follow-ups, suspicious call, welfare checks. Last year we handled 49,068 calls for service in the 365-day period. This is uh, our new 
part-time crime analyst sitting right here with his two kids, uh, Addy and Grayson. We just wanted to show that everybody here has an investment in the community. We Most of us live in the community, so anything that, anything that impacts the city impacts us directly with our families. So UCR. UCR is basically how the FBI, it's uniform crime reporting, and it's how the FBI documents crimes. They break it into seven different elements. Um, they do it property crimes, and they do it crimes against pro uh, persons, which is violent crime. So there's two different sections. You have larceny, motor vehicles, and I'll break it down a little further and show you. But it's basically how many crimes per thousand people. For the past, from 2002 to 2013, you can see that in 2002 we had 60.3 crimes per every, or per every thousand citizens. It had periods of up and down, and, and then recently it's gone from uh, down to 30, as low as 27.6, and it's gone back up a little bit to 32.8, which is exactly what the uh, national trend is right now. So comparative, just to show data from similar cities in the, in the area, you can see that you have a high of Reading with 55.9. Um, our neighbors right next to us, Tulare, some of the other cities, and Rockland is a different kind of uh, demographic, so it's hard to compete against them. They have 16.4, and they're one of the safest cities in California. We fall toward the lower half at 33.6. And again, broken down by beats from last year, 2012 to 2013. These are the, uh, the, the columns that represent the total number of crimes. Larceny, theft, larceny, burglary, motor vehicle thefts are all considered crimes against property, property crimes. And then assault, robbery, rape, and homicide are, of course, violent crimes. So in beat one, which is the area in the far west north area that I showed you originally, all the two is basically it's telling you that larceny stayed the same as last year. We had a slight increase in burglaries and then up and down. You can see the biggest trend that we've seen and we've seen across the state. It has to do with realignment, I think, as they have to find a place to put the people from the state prisons and they come back to the local jurisdictions with less um, sentencing when they do reoffend. That's been the biggest crime increase and it's gone up over double and beat one with the shopping centers and stuff there. Aggravated assaults went up, robberies went up, rapes went down, homicides of course was stagnant at zero. Beat two, the trends are a little bit different, most of them decreased and the one increase on there is again the motor vehicle thefts. But we saw significant drops in crimes against people. <coughs> beat three, central uh, Yuba City basically. Same type of uh, trend that you'll see there, drop in larceny, drop in burglary, increase in motor vehicle thefts, slight increase in assault, robberies, rapes went up, and homicides went down by two, which is very significant for us. Beat four, almost the same type of a trend. Everything went down with the exception of motor vehicle thefts. And beat five, the southernmost part of the city, same type of a trend. Again, motor vehicle thefts up, everything else went down. So total in, 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 uh, of the whole city encompassing all the different beats, you can see that overall we are down 1.82% from 2012. And to break that down into violent crime, we are down 26.4% in violent crime, but we're up 5% in property, which gives us the overall 1.82% 2%, drop in uh, overall crimes, which is actually against the national trend right now because they are seeing an increase in both. Our motor units. That's one of the areas when we talk about what are we reducing right now. Unfortunately, in order to get more patrol officers out there, we had to cut back from other areas to make sure our patrol is fully staffed. Normally, we would have uh, five motor officers. We currently have two. But traffic index, that's how you kind of, I, I, I'm sure Council Member uh, Buckland can explain this much better than I can, <laughs> but a Northwestern University traffic study who's considered the, uh, the experts on this basically say that in order to have a decrease in property or injury traffic accidents, you have to write so many citations. There's no such things as quotas. But for every injury accident, if you had 25 tickets, and those are hazardous citations, which means they're tickets, not non-moving violations like a, a light bulb out, there are accidents that directly affect an um, accident. So for instance, speeding. Speeding could cause an accident. That would be a hazardous citation. The goal is to get to 25, and then you'll see more of a uh, reduction in or an increase in your traffic index, which would decrease your injury accidents. So in the last few years, 
We've had it as high as 26. We saw a drop last year to 18.8, and we're on the increase despite a loss of a couple of motor officers. Our uh, injury accident traffic index is 21.78. Injury accidents, they stayed steady for the first three years. This year, they decreased down to 241. And this year, I mean 2013. Hazardous citations, those are the numbers of tickets that we wrote that were hazardous and citations. Top five collision locations everybody wants to know. Bridge Street and Plumas, Calusa and Gray, Bridge Street and OG, 99 and Bridge, 99 and Calusa Avenue. That's our records. The areas of emphasis that we're placing on this year after uh, going through this with our different staff. Gang suppression and violent crime suppression, again, that remains our number one uh, priority. And that's something that the council has dictated and supported us for the last few years. Net five and gang task force maintenance. We see that the state is pulling back more money. We have no more support from the state for our net five. We're doing that through a, a coalition of the different agencies, Yuba County, Sutter County, and ourselves. We don't have Marysville no longer in net five. So the resources are dwindling, but we're not going to let that impact how many people that we put into that and how much emphasis we're placing on gangs and drugs because they know that uh, drugs is the number one cause of crimes. Realignment. Yeah, I think studies have shown now, the recent studies that have come out from different uh, institutes are showing there is a direct correlation between property crimes increasing and realignment where they're having more of the uh, nonviolent, non-sexual type crimes being released into the community. Um, some things that we have done, we've got money from the, from the realignment committee, not enough to do what we'd like to do to bring more officers on the road, but it has allowed us to get a new canine and we're looking at another one potentially this year. We are working with probation and county and early identification um, and ID and in suppression of the people that are on this, what we call perks, the uh, probation, not parole anymore type offenders. Uh, we're, in, we're definitely starting to uh, try to increase our numbers in volunteers by number of citizens academies that we're placing, trying to make sure they are full and we're getting the volunteers who have to attend the citizens academy prior to becoming volunteers. We understand how important they are to us, getting the community more involved. This is our latest K-9, FASCO, and Officer Gibson. And again, are we safe? We're below the similar cities' crime rates in California, below the national averages of cities from 50 to 99,000. I should say two times less crime rate than 11 years ago. We have gang task force net five presence in the regional crime fighting alliance. Crime rate is trending up national trend, but we are more focused than ever to make sure that we do stay safe. And we're continuing to work with the California police chiefs to gain additional money for issues regarding uh, resulting from realignment. We're very active. The California Police Chiefs Association is very active in trying to get money back to the cities and not just to the counties for probation and other types of programs. We want to see it coming back to us who are the most affected by it. These are our cadets. Again, it's a volunteer program. They're a great resource for us, and it gives them the opportunity also to get involved with the police department and see if it's something they want to do, something we're trying to do to boost our recruiting. New programs, we continue to have great, which is uh, getting all of our trained officers that are trained as great officers, gang resistance officers, and hitting the fifth, is it fifth and sixth? I think it's fifth and sixth graders at all the different middle schools and showing them different alternatives to, uh, to the gang style, gang life. We continue uh, our emphasis on applying for grant money. You'll see that in the next coming month or so. We have several grants that are coming through. Again, the Office of Traffic Safety. And then we have some Homeland Defense grant money coming. And then we also have uh, other things that we're looking at. One of the Homeland Defense things that you'll be seeing in the next few years, we've noticed that it's very hard for us to access some of the areas down in the river bottoms. Uh, what we've done is we've applied for and received money for all-terrain vehicles that, that could hold more than one person so we don't send one officer down alone on a motorcycle and it's more of an officer safety issue. Those vehicles can also be used for the Sikh parade and other large events where it's hard to get around in a regular vehicle. So you'll be seeing some of that stuff coming forward to you guys. And one last thing that I wanted to show you is um, we'll call this Peacekeeper 2. And these are... Uh, Things that are becoming available now as Af Afghanistan and Pakistan are drawing down. It looks like a very oppressive vehicle, but actually it's a very officer safety type vehicle. Um, 
Studies have shown in the past or prior incidents where an officer was down, the Lyndhurst High School incident, these things would be invaluable in saving lives. We're fortunate right now to be looking at the opportunity where as they draw down, there's a uh, law enforcement, it's a military surplus program where a vehicle like this, which costs over $200,000, may be available to us for free. And I'm not talking a used one, I'm talking a brand new vehicle that could be used to save lives. Our current peacekeeper right now is kind of antiquated. It has a uh, resistance for some capacity caliber uh, pistols and rifles, but the older it gets, there's mental fatigue, and it's no longer certified to the extent that we need it to be for our officers and for our public. So this is something that's going to be uh, looked at right now. It's very inexpensive for us to maintain. We've already run it. It's, a, it's brand new vehicles. They're fresh off the line. They've never been used. And the maintenance, we've already talked to the, uh, the corp yard. They're able to handle this uh, without very much increase in, in, over a regular vehicle. And we don't use these things very much. But I did want to bring that out in front of you. I don't want to surprise you like some count cities have been surprised in the past that these are available. They are beneficial and something that we should definitely be looking at, in my opinion. With that, I will entertain any questions from the council. Thank you, Chief. Uh, great presentation, other than that one photo. Um, <laughs> any questions for the Chief? Is it possible that we can use that vehicle in some of the parades the City Council can ride in? If you yes, don't sir. want to be seen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank or, you, Chief. Or is that after a questionable uh, <clears throat> result from the Council that you want to be in that? Any other questions? I, I just have a um, couple of comments, and, and I think that, that uh, given the, the drawdown that has occurred at, at Yuba City Police Department, Chief, that you're doing a remarkable job in restaffing, and, and cer certainly the command staff has uh, been involved in these decisions to make sure that uh, the areas of impact uh, most suit what the what the needs are of our community, and that's a reduction of crime. And, and um, in many cases, when when staffing drops to the levels that they would be at now, um, there could be a, uh, you know just a plethora of, of morale issues and things like that. And, um, understanding that that you know officers leave for certain reasons um, with that said I, I just I really commend our, our staff on on being able to, to uh, fill those the needs of our community uh, through the staffing and, and drawing down certain uh, portions of the of the department to fill uh, what's most important and, and that's our daily our daily safety so Appreciate that. Thank you, Council Member. And I, I want to say it's because we do have a great department, a great staff that does work for us. And uh, you know that, having been part of it for many years, that it, it's the people that makes the difference. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Thank you. Next item up is uh, public communication. You're welcome and encouraged to participate in this meeting. Public communication. Public comment is taken on items listed on the agenda when they are called. Public comment on items not listed on the agenda will be heard at this time. Comments on controversial items may be limited in large groups are encouraged to select a representative to express the opinion of the group. Um, anybody here wish to come and speak? 